So Steve Kerr, head coach of the Golden State Warriors, recently made headlines and sparked some controversy by commenting on Anthony Davis, his trade request, and how it could potentially be bad for the NBA. I personally disagree with a lot of the stuff Kerr said. I believe Kerr made his comments on a podcast or something. I'm not going to take the time to listen to that. I will be basing my thoughts on what was written in this Yahoo article. I'm talking more about the Anthony Davis situation, where a guy is perfectly healthy and has a couple years left on his deal and says, I want to leave. That's a real problem that the league has to address and that players have to be careful with. First off, I'm a little confused as to why Steve Kerr mentioned something about being perfectly healthy. Is he implying that if a player is injured, he is now more justified in requesting a trade? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I suppose what he might be referring to is Anthony Davis sitting out games and playing limited minutes after he requested his trade, despite being quote unquote perfectly healthy. Look, I know the NBA goes through revisionist history a lot, but surely people cannot be misremem misremembering something that happened like four months ago. Anthony Davis was sitting out games and playing limited minutes because the team told him to. It was not his decision. In addition to that, Anthony Davis was not perfectly healthy either. He had back spasms which also caused him to miss some games towards the end of the year. But whatever. Let's stop focusing on the word healthy and move on to the rest of the sentence. I agree with Kerr that all-star players switching teams so often isn't really good for the NBA. Or at the very least, I'm not personally a fan of it. Of course, what I personally like and dislike is not necessarily reflective of what is good nor bad for the NBA. Don't get me wrong, I have never been one of those fans that insists players have to be loyal. Like for example, in the great debate, Kobe versus LeBron. One thing you will constantly hear Kobe fans say is that Kobe is better because he was loyal to his team and LeBron switched teams constantly. I have never been the type of fan to use the loyalty argument, in fact I've always thought the loyalty argument is stupid. If you're a player and you're stuck in a situation you don't like, I have absolutely no problem with you wanting to get out and find a better team for yourself. If you're a player such as Anthony Davis, stuck on a team for what was it like 6 years? and not in a single one of those years were you contending for a championship, would it not be practical for you to leave and go find a better team? Now with all that being said, I do think player mobility in the NBA has become a little excessive. Just look at this picture of the 2017 All-Stars. Almost every player in this photo has changed teams since then. Some players have changed teams two or three times, and that was only two years ago. I don't see how the NBA could possibly address this problem, as Kerr says, because if a guy doesn't want to play somewhere anymore, he doesn't want to be there anymore. It doesn't matter if there is one year left on his deal or five, you can't change his feelings. If he doesn't want to be there anymore, he doesn't want to be there. The best the team can hope for is, th is that the player changes his mind, which is highly unlikely, albeit not impossible. The only solution I could think of would be if the NBA eliminated trades altogether. But fans, media, superstars, teams, I don't think anybody would want to see trades be eliminated altogether. Moving on to the next part of Kerr's statement. When you sign on that dotted line, you owe your effort and your play to that team, to that city, to the fans. And then, once the contract runs out, it's completely your right to leave as a free agent. But if you sign the contract, then you should be bound to that contract. I agree with Kerr that if a player signs a contract with a team, he owes it to that team to give his effort, dedication, performance, and all that stuff. But can anyone name me an NBA player in recent memory who told his team, trade me and I won't play another game for you if you don't? If something like that was happening, then I would agree with Kerr's overall point, but that's not the case. What happens is, a player requests a trade, which obviously means he's not going to re-sign when his contract is up. The team then decides to trade the player so they can get something for him in return. 
A team does not have to honor a player's trade request. If they want to keep him, they can keep him, but he'll just walk in free agency and they get nothing for him in return. What scenario would be worse for the Pelicans? Anthony Davis keeping his intentions to himself and then just bolting in free agency? Or AD being up front with them and, the, and thus giving them the opportunity to get some assets for him in return? Aren't the Pelicans in a better situation going forward than they otherwise would have been if AD had just simply left in free agency? Davis, after requesting his trade, was still playing well in the limited minutes in the limited action that the Pelicans gave him, so it's not like he cheated them with his effort or anything. Again, it was not his decision to sit out, it was the Pelicans' decision along with a legitimate injury. Hell, even someone like Jimmy Butler, who got a lot of criticism for how he handled his trade request, but in the games he played for the Timberwolves, he was playing really, really well. Yeah, I know he was sitting out games and he had his off-the-court shenanigans. The off-the-court stuff is a different story. On the court, he was still playing really, really well. If you come to an agreement with the team that, hey, it's probably best for us to part ways, that's one thing. But the Davis stuff was really groundbreaking. And hopefully not a trend because it's bad for the league. I'm kind of baffled that Anthony Davis is getting so much hate, or criticism rather, for how he handled the whole trade request situation. He told the team he has no intention of re-signing, and that he would like to be traded. What crime did he commit? Davis is by no means the first player in NBA history to request a trade, so why are people acting like this is some new thing? He didn't even give them a list of teams to be traded to. Initially which would make finding a trade partner easier for the Pelicans. Is it just that people don't like LeBron and people don't like the Lakers, so seeing either one of those entities, let alone both of them, succeed just makes people mad? I suppose one thing that makes 80's trade request unique is that he started sitting out games afterwards, but as I have already said multiple times, that was not his decision. He never once told the Pelicans, if you don't trade me, I'm going to sit out. That was their choice. Another argument some people will throw at me is that AD requested a trade in the middle of the season, instead of waiting for the offseason. Which is true, but I don't really see the problem in that either. If anything, it gives the Pelicans more time to organize a trade. One might say that requesting a trade in the middle of the season ruined the Pelicans' year, but the Pelicans weren't going anywhere anyway, so who cares? They were not a playoff team, they were not going to make the playoffs. Steve Kerr had more stuff to say, but if I got into it, I would just start repeating myself again. So I'm gonna end the video here. So yeah, I don't really get why AD is being targeted so much. Is it because he joined LeBron and the Lakers? Honestly, I think he handled it pretty well. There have been, there have been guys who handled it worse than he did, like uh, Kyrie Irving, Jimmy Butler, Paul George requested a trade one year into a four-year contract. And oh boy, he is going to get booed so hard when he plays his first game back in Oklahoma City.